people in this call. And we're so happy that you're so many. Uh, but if everybody's microphone is on, then it will be hard for people to listen. But I see everybody's muted so far, so that's pretty perfect. Um, I will start with sharing my screen and show you the agenda. And the uh, first thing that we're gonna uh, discuss today is a little round of introductions because we felt it would be a good opportunity that we first get to know each other um, and learn a little bit um, about where you're from and what your organization is doing. We have to keep this short because we're so many people. Um, but yeah, let's start with that. Sweta, can I hand this over to you? Yeah. Uh, so guys, since we are a big group of people, I think it would be really difficult if all of us start speaking. So what I would so what I uh, is that we uh, send out our introductions in the chat. And I will start putting the introductions down on a word document. Go with me, go with me, yeah. Uh, and you know we can I can read out or I can put it on the screen and then all of you can see where everybody is from uh, because we have too many people it'll, it'll be uh, very difficult to uh, have everybody speak through their microphones so we will start off with doing a word document where we start putting everybody's names and where they are from on it and all of you can see it um, so just to give you guys an introduction of the team here uh, I am Shweta Sotrabasham. I am from India and I am the Global South of the Coin for the Global Youth Biodiversity Institute. And uh, along with Krishan, who's another, who's the other focal point, we are a part of a steering committee uh, for Gibbon and we help coordinate things on, uh, at the international level. Gracia, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Before Gracia introduces herself, we still have some people that didn't mute your, their microphone. Uh, I'm currently trying to do this, but it doesn't really work. So if you haven't muted your microphone, kindly mute it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Gracia. I am part of the steering committee of Given. I've been in this network for the past six years already, five years already. And um, I've been working also very hard with Shweta and Christian, and I'm very happy to have you here. I think you're going to be able to create amazing um, activities together. Thank you. Okay. So guys, I am just sharing my screen now and you guys can uh, see it's just a plain word document where I'm going to start putting in the introductions that people are sharing and I can even read them out so that you guys can see uh, what it is about. Uh, uh, you can learn about people through that this for around 10 minutes and then after that uh, once we get a chance to get all the 60 people's names and uh, where they're from on this uh, on this document we will move on to explaining to you guys what we have planned for you. Okay. So yeah, thank you guys for starting. I started with the things that we have done. I'm just going to go to the top of 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 the let me see, Gracia. I'll try to make you an organizer. Yeah. Um, everybody, please let me mute your microphone. <laughs> Gracia, can Thank you hear everybody? Yes, I, I can start now. Okay. Um, I think we still have one person in this call that didn't mute their microphone and as much as your TV program or radio program sounds entertaining, if you could kind of mute yourself, thank you so much, we appreciate that. I think we're fine. Thank you guys.
I hope you guys can see the different people. I'm sure you can always already see their names and where they're from in the chat. But I'm just adding it here so that we have a log and you guys can get a chance to see all this later as well. Christian, do you uh, mind? Uh, you could start. You could possibly read out some of them just to say hi to people while I copy paste their information. Right. Wonderful. So um, the first person that uh, introduced himself is James Gonfway. I hope I pronounced it right. From the wonderful country of Malawi, who is um, working to leverage the talents and the energy of young people to address challenges that young people face. And next we have uh, Dalia Marquez from the equally wonderful country of Venezuela, um, who is also pretty active in her country. She's a human rights lawyer. Then we have uh, Harsha Vadan from, oh my goodness, Indian city names, from Bizak Patnam City. Swata, did I do this at least remotely right? Yeah, remotely right. <laughs> remotely right, thank you. And um, he is representing the India Youth for Society organization. Welcome. Then we have, and um, and we have um, Asha Ninka from Peru, from Uksha Pampa. I think I'm going to stop trying to pronounce names that I cannot pronounce. And she lives in the Yanesha Biosphere Reserve. And I apologize in advance to everybody who's uh, city names or personal names and butchering. Um, I, I hope I can do some capacity building at some point. Then we have Hassan Molid Yassin from Somalia. He is the co-founder and vice chairperson of Somali Greenpeace Association. And they're also working on biodiversity and climate change. Next, we have Mary Jane Angel from Ghana. She's the national coordinator of uh, Given Ghana and also a member of the Hatov Foundation, that is a given member organization. Then we have Slava from Georgia, who is part of the organization Umbrella. Siri from Madagascar, who is the founder of Move Up Madagascar. And we have uh, Shay Harya from Pakistan. Apologies for, for my pronunciation uh, again. Then we have uh, Samuel Siri Tonga, who is the founder of Warn My Lungs from Indonesia. And then we have uh, Nicholas Angesa from Kenya. Then we have uh, Christian from uh, Gibbon, Paraguay, who is also the current president of OPADIS, an NGO that is working in organizing youth to support the management of protected areas. Uh, and then we have Obed Asamoa from Ghana, who is the head of uh, programs of research and the Grand Institute of Ghana. Wow, okay, then we have uh, Arthur R. M. Becker, the National Program Manager for the West African Youth Network in Liberia. And he also works as the Product Officer for Multilateral Environmental Agreements at the Environmental Protection Agency of Liberia. Um, number 15, we have Ponto Desmond from Cameroon, who is the Founder and Director of CEPO Cameroon. And now, Swata, if you could scroll up again. Sorry. Yep. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, then we have Franchette Ibot from Cameroon, who is the. Uh, excuse me, I have not seen my name. Uh, we, we're going to add names. Swata is working on that. Yes. And so uh, Franchette is the coordinator for Cameroon Youth Biodiversity okay. Network. We have uh, Sikanda Shah, who is the president of uh, the Plants Educational Forum in Pakistan. We have Amanui George Amenshwi from Cameroon as well. Um, Gracia, would you like to take over from here so that people do not only hear my voice? I think we stopped at number 19. Sure, Christian. Okay, then we have Priska from Tanzania, represent the Aqua Farm Organization. Then Ismael Roland Camara from Sierra Leona. He's the Executive Director of Youth Empowerment for Sustainable Organization. Ah, don't scroll it. Okay, then John Carl Alonso Gay from Philippines, and he is representing his two organizations, Alpha Team Organization, a youth social enterprise, and Feeling Con Philippine Initiative for Environmental Conservation. Uh, then we have Gokul from India. Um, he's part of CFO and Climate Hood. Um, then Teshna Sobhun, sorry for my pronunciation, 
uh, representing Grand River Southeast Youth Circle, a youth-led NGO based in Mauritius. Wow, I always wanted to go there. Then Catalina Concha from Colombia, a, a nice friend. And she is the CEO of Arasari Conservation and Research, a business project to promote welfare of society through conservation of biodiversity. Then um, Rakib Hassan, working as lead environment specialist as an organization from Bangladesh. Then Gisina Dlamini, I think this is very bad pronunciated. I'm sorry, Gisina. Uh, she's a newly elected focal point of Eswatini GYBN. Then Scout Pronto, Breslin, he's a co-founder of Hudson Valley Wild, a youth organization in New York State, focused on youth action on biodiversity. And he is also a member of Future. Uh, okay, then Cretus Joseph, uh, co-founder and executive secretary of Aqua Farms, located in Tanzania, but currently doing his master's in Belgium. Then Al Hassan Sedation from Freetown, Sierra Leona, founder and president of Sierra Leona School Green Club. Then Moise Kitite, president of Build Peace and Development. Then Topo Aime in Ivory Coast. Daksh Bihari Panray from the Republic of Mauritius. Um, he's doing a senior project management manager for environmental protection and conservation organization. Kalechi Hart Ekeldo from Nigeria with Dar Communications PLC here in Nigeria. Then Yvonne from Colombia. Uh, she's an environmental training manager in Arasari Conservation and Research. I'm glad you joined, guys. Um, Jessa Garibay Yayem from Center for Sustainability in Philippines. Then Jin Tanaka from Japan, representative of University Student Chamber in Kyushu Branch, United Nations Non Governmental Organization in Japan. Then Elaine Huang from Taiwan. Uh, she is the she is working at the Convention on Biological Diversity in this subcommission in International Forestry Student Association. Then Eugene Saisoliatin from Minsk, Belarus. Sorry, I, I jumped one. Um, GC Neil, oh, this is very complicated to pronounce. GC Neil from Eswatini, co founder and environmental coordinator of Eco Youth Engaged NGO. Uh, Christian, back to you. I have read 20. Thank you so much. And you stopped at number 41. No, 42. 42. Perfect. Swata, could you go back to number 19? Because we jumped over number 19. Thank you so much. So number 19 is Alayandra Guzman from Indonesia, who is representing the Muliantara organization that focuses on environment and biodiversity education. And we also jumped over number 29. Sweta, if you could go to 29. And this is my friend Garrett. Garrett is the focal point. And that I can pronounce, and I'm going to try to translate it into English, of the German Youth Association for Nature Observation, which is a German youth organization that focuses on nature observation. They do really great stuff. And um, yeah, they have a focus on environmental education and species identification. And now we go down to number 42. Thank you, Sweta. Uh, and then we have Akko Peter from Cameroon, who is the founder and director of MEGWA, which stands for My Earth. Then we have number 44. This is Axel Artiaga. Oh my God, my pronunciation. He is from Peru and he works in the Biosphere Reserve and is part of the UNESCO Map Use Group. And we have Marceline Adamu Abu, who is the founder and coordinator of the NGO Action for the Respect and Protection of the Environment um, from Cameroon. And we have David M. Mwene, who is the programs manager of the Catholic Youth Network for Environmental Sustainability in Africa. And we have 
Ernesta Entarkobangise from Rwanda, who is the coordinator of the Rwanda Youth Mappers Organization. And then we have Conan Kevin, who is the founder of K4S Knowledges for Services Limited from Rwanda, and they are working on sustainable development and nutrition in Africa. And number 49 is Dami Pikuda, the program manager of ISNAD Africa. All right, I think that's where we're standing at the moment. Anybody else? Yeah, I think that's Sudarsha. All right, that, that I can see. Sudarsha from Sri Lanka, who is the chapter coordinator for Given Sri Lanka and the co-founder of the Earth Lanka organization. All right. Guys, if you missed anybody, you can just add in, yeah, at the bottom and we'll just put it in here. Okay. So this is uh, Matt Lindenberg from Global Conservation Corps in South Africa. And then we have uh, Platon S. Plaka, Jr. from Liberia, who is a student of Cuffington University. And now I have to go back to the Word document because it was too fast. Sorry. And uh, he also works with the Community Development and Research Agency as a research assistant. Okay, then we have Adeline Pierre from Haiti. Uh, she's uh, who is currently working as a country director and biodiversity focal point of Yes Academia. And then, uh, okay, and then we have. Uh, Reni Bayili from Burkina Faso in West Africa. He's the ex executive director of the Rousseau des Jeunes Sahéliens pour le Climat, so the Sahelian Youth Climate Network. Uh, then we have Vikram Jograna, the founder and president of the Madhuvan Foundation in Gujarat in India. I feel like I should apologize to everybody again for butchering so many names and places. Okay, this I can do maybe. This is Omar from Gambia, the program coordinator of Eco Travel Gambia. All right, I think we're almost done. Six more people. Let me see if I missed anybody in the beginning. I don't know if we missed these people, but I'm just adding the people in. Okay, so we have Ponto Desmond from Cameroon, who is the founder and director of CEQO Cameroon. Then we have Joey of S-O-S-S-O-U-K-P-E, this NGO from Benin. Omar A.J. Seho. Um, yeah, who is also a coordinator of Eco Travel Gambia. I'm not sure if you had that already. Okay. Sorry, let me change that. This is, do we have this person too? I think that's it. Yes, yes, I think it is. Okay, cool. So sure. then I think that's the name I remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. So, Brian, I do not know what you mean by uh, Kaya's. So, if you want to elaborate, uh, that would be good. Uh, hello, I think this, this name, I think the, the, the number 59 has been included previously. And that is my name. Okay. But, okay, thank you so much. And uh Christian, do you want to start the presentation? I think this was great. We really, uh, I mean, at least in the brief while, because we don't have too much time and we have so many people. Uh, Somewhere this, around 40. Yeah. Check um, it out. Spata, since you're the main organizer, I think you and, and uh, Gracia can only mute people. So maybe you could mute people. And for me to share the screen, you would have to stop sharing your screen. Okay, let me stop then. Right. 
All right, then um, we're gonna continue. Uh, well, once again, thank you so much for all the introductions and again, a welcome to all the 78 people that have now joined our call. Um, I hope it was okay this way. We just felt if we um, individually unmute everybody and let you introduce yourself, it's gonna take way longer. And as much as we would love to do it, um, I think it could get uh, quite late for some people. So allow me to jump forward. Uh, the first thing that we wanted to do today is to give you a little overview of what the Global Use Biodiversity Network actually is, how it functions. I think most of you have heard about this already. Uh, you have signed up as focal points of member organizations, but we just wanted to make sure that we bring you all back up to speed so that you're at the same page. Um, and after this part, we will talk a little bit more concretely about what Gibbon can do for you, also what we cannot do, and what we have planned for this year. And I think this will be uh, hopefully very useful for you. Starting a little bit with some background, Gibbon is around for 10 years now. Um, we started as an initiative by a bunch of people that were very lucky and attended an international youth conference in Japan. And to be very honest, we were really, really disappointed with that youth conference. Um, we didn't feel very motivated. It was a super, super tight schedule. And one evening, some of us were sitting together um, having some drinks and we're thinking, hey, why don't we start a network to really connect everybody? Um, and that was back in August 2010. Um, a few months later, CBD COP10 uh, took place. That was the UN Biodiversity Summit uh, in, in Nagoya in Japan. Um, a very, very important conference. And at this conference, we approached the CBD Secretariat. We were 13 people from all kinds of different countries. Um, and proposed to them that we would like to create a use constituencies. Um, in the time in between, we had a really tough time because we had zero resources. We were all volunteers. Uh, we still have no office or whatsoever, um, but we just felt we have to do it. And that was back in 2010 when smartphones were not as widely available as today. Um, but we managed to secure some funds uh, from the German government that allowed us to organize a kickoff meeting that took place in 2012. And then two years, um, then a couple of months later, we had the next UN Biodiversity Summit in Sweta's hometown in Hyderabad in India. And at this meeting, we managed to get 196 parties to the CBD to adopt uh, this little piece of text that you can see here. And this is the first time that in the history of the CBD, young people were officially recognized um, as important stakeholders and contributors to the preservation of biodiversity. So that was a huge, huge victory. And if you ever have issues with your government, if you need to convince them that young people are important, remind them that they also adopted this little piece um, of international legislation. Um, as a side effect, as you can see here under two, um, this decision also officially recognizes given as the use constituency of CBD. Well, and since then our network has grown in a way that we would never ever have experienced at all. What you can see here is a photo of our Given Europe workshop that we organized last year in August. I think some people here in the call can recognize themselves. Um, and since then we have grown to encompass 550 organizations in 145 countries. And all these organizations together and the individual members, we have um, 850,000 views that we're representing. Um, if anybody would have asked me back in 2010, I would never, never have thought that it could grow that much. But I think that's a wonderful example of um, what you can achieve when you really put your hat into it. What I thought is most relevant uh, for you guys because you're representing organizations is that we talk a little bit about how Gibbon is actually structured um, and where you fit into the structure. So this is an overview and I will now go like through the different elements in the structure. So we have basically two categories of membership. That is individual members, which are all registered um, individual members. And we kept it as open as possible because we really wanted to design our network in a way uh, that it doesn't limit participation of anybody. So um, all you have to do is to basically sign up on this link and then you're an individual member of the organization. And currently we have um, a little more than 4,300 individual members. Then uh, what you guys did is, uh, we also wanted to be open for all kinds of organizations. 
And it can be any kind of civil society organizations that are either already active on biodiversity and use issues or that would like to get active on biodiversity and that are looking for a way to get uh, connected into a bigger network. And uh, since we opened this process, more than 550 organizations have joined. Um, and it's also a very easy process. You all did this, you just have to fill out a form. Then what we have is our Gibbon Steering Committee, uh, which is our network's main coordination and decision-making body. Uh, it usually consists of eight to 15 representatives that come from all world regions. Uh, they serve a two-year term. Um, and the term for the current steering committee has just begun. So it's from 2020 to 2022. And every two years we conduct elections. It's quite a cumbersome process. We do it online in a secure platform. And what we really want to make sure that um, everybody has a fair chance to go. And every registered individual given member that is aged between 18 and 28 can run for a position in the steering committee. It is being uh, screened by the alumni board. Um, and then every registered individual given member between the ages of 18 and 30 is eligible to vote. You might now wonder why organizations cannot vote. This is actually something that we had discussed quite a while ago, and we found it a bit difficult how to exactly figure out a formula to weight individual votes versus organizational votes. There are some other use constituencies that do that, but we choose that we um, limit it to individuals to make it a bit clearer. Um, but if you want to vote, it's very simple because you cannot only register your organization, you can also at the same time register as an individual. Um, and that's how our steering committee is being formed. Within the steering committee, we have two focal points. Um, and the job of the focal points is basically to represent our network externally, to liaise with external partners, and mostly with the CBD secretariat. Um, and because we want to make sure that, is, that our network is as representative as possible, we have one person that is representing the Global South, that is Sweta, and we have one person representing the Global North, and that is me. And this is currently the steering committee that just got elected. Um, so you can see here in overview, there are some regions where we didn't have candidates, um, but almost all regions are currently covered in the steering committee. Then um, another thing that we didn't uh, create originally, but that was something that a lot of members were asking us is um, national and regional chapters. This is an initiative that we started back in 2016. Actually, it was something uh, that resulted because our friends from Mexico, Gracia was part of the team, approached mm -hmm. us with the idea that they would really like to create a chapter. Um, and that started a whole process. Sweta is now coordinating this. And basically, chapters are national coordination platforms for youth that want to actively engage on biodiversity issues. Um, and it is not a platform that we created to duplicate any of the amazing work that you guys are doing in your organizations. We figured out there are so many organizations around in some countries, but then in other countries, you don't have any organization. You have like no platform to bring all of this together. So the idea with the chapters was to create a platform to help multiple organizations to coordinate with each other and to also give individuals a new opportunity to engage on biodiversity issues. Um, and I think Sweta will talk about this a little bit more. Uh, this is an overview of where we have created chapters so far. Um, Sweta, correct me when I'm wrong, but I think we're now at over 40 chapters. Yeah, yes. this is the process of how chapters are being created. Um, Sweta can walk you through this. These are some examples of chapters that we already have. Um, and you can see they're doing all kinds of really cool activities, um, but we can talk about this a little bit later. So what are we doing at the global level? Um, one of the key things that we're trying to do is uh, that we're bringing young people to CBD meetings. Uh, we are luckily recognized as the official use constituency to the CBD. And um, as such, we're raising funding, we're training young people. We want to give you an experience um, to attend CBD meetings and to bring your experiences, the activities that you do to the CBD um, and influence this political process. Because we feel it's important that just not government delegates, but also young people um, have a voice in these negotiations. Um, we're very proud so far we have managed to organize 12 youth delegations 
Um, we sent use delegations to all CBD meetings since 2012, and we managed to get funding for around 185 people to attend these meetings. And these are not um, the kind of scholarships where you just come, where you have a good time in wherever the COP takes place. We do an intensive preparatory process. You come a bit earlier. We do webinars before. We really train you so that you understand the process um, and that you go to the CBD and that you're prepared and that you can really effectively participate. Um, and we're not just doing this um, as our own, as given. Um, we also integrate all our organizations, all members into this process. So if your organization is lucky enough to receive funding to send people, um, then you can also participate in this training. Um, we embed you in our um, delegations. We help you to really get integrated so that you do not only come as a representative of, let's say, IFSA or any other organization and you're on your own. You know, you become part of our team. Of course, you can still do your own um, social media communication, your own branding, but we really want to make sure that we're all standing united. Um, and in this united way, we have delivered 78 interventions. We have influenced many texts in the CBD. Um, most recently, we have managed to get the principle of intergenerational equity and transformative education into the draft text for the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Agreement. And um, yeah, we are actually pretty respected by many parties, and that's something we're quite proud about. Um, but that's also something that we are thanks to you and thanks to the many people that join our delegations. Well, um, you're probably familiar with a lot of other youth constituencies like Yango and the UNFCCC or uh, the major group for children and youth. Most of these youth constituencies do what they do best. They focus on um, bringing young people, representing their voices at international meetings. But when it comes to biodiversity, there's just so much that you can do at an international meeting. Yes, international legislation is super important. It can push countries to take action, but biodiversity is also something where we can take actions every day in our local schools, universities, and so on. Um, because we felt that if given would just be a youth constituency like any other, um, you know, we couldn't bring the change that we saw so we need. So back in 2014, we launched the Youth Voices Youth Capacity Building Program. And this program it um, consists of uh, different elements that I'm going to quickly walk you through now. Um, first, as part of this Youth Voices program, we also had a CBD-related segment in which we produced CBD in a nutshell. You can download this over there. The link is available. And later in the recording, we can also um, share this with you. Um, this is a guidebook that we basically wrote for ourselves so that you can, before you go to a CBD meeting, um, learn to understand how the process works. Um, we try to do it in the most visual way possible. So this book is full of graphics and, and, and pictural guides on how the CBD works. Um, and now it's not just a guide that is being used by youth delegates. Uh, we have the European Union, we have national governments, uh, we had multiple countries asking us for copies um, because they are using this guidebook to even train their own delegates. So that's something we're really proud of. Um, down on it, take a look. It will help you to better understand um, how this spaceship U, um, CBD is functioning and how you can navigate it. And um, some of you mentioned this in the website group. Um, this webinar is in English. I'm speaking English to you. It's not my native language. And it's not the native language of many uh, people here in, in, in this group. And you should be proud of it because this is about diversity and language diversity. Your own language is something beautiful. Um, but as a matter of fact, um, we need to find one language to communicate with each other. Um, but with this guidebook, we're trying to also make it available in multiple languages. So we're currently working on translations into French, Portuguese, German, Spanish, and Japanese. And if you want to help with any translation, you're most welcome um, to, to join us in this effort. But we're really trying um, to accommodate as many languages as possible. Then um, another element um, that we did as part of uh, Youth Voices is that we organized regional youth capacity building workshops. So far, we have organized eight of these workshops. On this map here, you can see where we organized it. Um, it took place almost everywhere in the world, with the exception of North America and Oceania. 
um, and we're trying to, and the Caribbean, we're trying to bring um, workshops there too. Um, and so far we have trained 120 young people from, uh, sorry, we have trained 340 young people from 120 countries through this program. And what is important about these workshops, it's not just workshops where you have a good time, where you come for one week and you enjoy a nice place. These are some pictures of our Europe workshops. It's a workshop in the actual sense. So we work with you, we um, develop concrete projects, we do an analysis of the drivers of loss of biodiversity in your region, and then we identify what can we as young people do, what concrete projects could we launch to really bring change to our communities. Um, for these workshops, we usually provide a set of full scholarships so that independent of your uh, personal background, you can fully participate in these workshops. If an organization, again, is lucky and has funding, uh, the workshops are open to everybody. They can also come with their own funding. Um, yeah, and it's a pretty cool tool. And um, once the situation with the pandemic is better, we hope that we can continue organizing these workshops. And thanks to these workshops, we have organized um, also more than 50 on the ground campaigns and initiatives that directly address biodiversity loss and that are completely led by young people. So to summarize, what Gibbon is about is building alliances. We do not want to compete with anybody. We do not want to take any of the very, very hard fought ground that your organizations have uh, created in your, in your countries away. We want to help you. We want to help you to um, connect your activities with the international level, with the regional level. We want to be a space to work together so that we can really bring together, um, bring about some change. Policy and advocacy, I talked about, this is something that we're doing um, we, we really try to capture the views of, of different youth groups and bring them to the CBD. Uh, we're also very active on social media, um, but Sweta is going to talk about this a little bit more in the next section. Um, I talked about our empowerment and capacity building programs. And yeah, I think now we can go to the next section on how you can engage with Gibbon. Sweta, would you like to take over here? Can you please continue sharing your screen? I can use the same presentation. Uh, Christian, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm going to continue sharing my screen. Cool. Uh, so just before I continue, I just wanted to also introduce you guys to two more steering committee members who are on this call. Uh, James and Kevin, would you like to just say hi? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is James. I'm from Uganda and I'm part of the steering committee. Uh, my major is mainly media. Um, I'm glad to see that we have about 80 something people. You guys, this is amazing. amazing. Thanks for joining our call. Thank you. Hello guys, this is Kevin from Nairobi. I'm the coordinator of the Kenyan chapter of Jibin. Uh, thank you so much for the big turn up and I'm excited for the journey ahead. Thanks. Thanks guys. Uh, yeah, Christian, please continue with the presentation. Um, okay, maybe maybe we can even do this part um, quickly together. So when it comes, what Gibbon can do for you, I already mentioned a number of things. Um, we are here to connect you with an international network to help your organization to go beyond your normal area of activity. We try to give you information um, about the CBD process. We try to share opportunities. We really want to build an international alliance so that we can all work together. Um, what we cannot do, um, just to clarify this, is we are a volunteer-driven network. So we can usually uh, not offer funding in the form of cash. Uh, we can provide some scholarships for workshops, for CBD meetings, but we're not a funding agency that can go around and fund all kinds of projects. That's unfortunately not our position. If we get there in a couple of years, it would really be nice. Um, yeah, so this is just like what I wanted to explain on, on what our network can do and what we cannot do. Um, yeah, and now going on to current projects and campaigns, or maybe Sweta, you have something to add on what we can do and what we cannot do. Yeah. So uh, I always tell people if when we ask when people ask us what Gibbon can do, uh, I always tell people Gibbon is you. So whatever you think we would like to do together, we can do it. So it's all about us. It's all about the community, and it's all about our ideas and how we want to shape the way we want to go forward. So 
always think about uh, that moving forward with Gibbon, that we always want to keep this as a very collaborative effort where we try our best to find ways in which we can do more together. And I think having this motto has really been a, a very good, great, good thing for Gibbon because we have become a very, very big network, not just on, with numbers, but also with engagement. We have so many people work, working with us as chapters, now organizations, you guys as organizations are also going to actively engage. We have members, we have a lot of people who are, uh, you know, working with us on several different issues from, you know, having working groups to engaging with us on different campaigns. Uh, at the same time, also supporting us in different uh, aspects of what they feel they want to contribute to. So we want all of you to think about this and remember that, you know, we can do whatever we want to do together as long as, you know, we all can have a discussion about it and move forward. And this is one of the main reasons we want to have this call is also because we wanted to talk to you guys about how you want to work together, how you think we can bring this big group of organizations uh, to create a stronger alliance under Gibbon so that you know, we can support you guys in going towards where you want to go as an as a organization and at the same time as a network of organizations. So yeah, please think about that. And uh, we, while we get you guys through the presentation, we will try to keep a round where we'll keep it open where you guys can actually write down some of the ideas you have of how we can engage together. The, the, some of the ideas we have, uh, you will see in us as and when we go through the presentation. Some of them, as you see, would be the creation of the WhatsApp group, creating a more uh, um, creating more scope for you guys to engage with each other. But at the same time, maybe we will have to see how we can work together uh, to create a stronger maybe advocacy advocacy policy or an advocacy uh, plan as such a big group of people and such a big group of organizations. So yeah, please think about it while you know this presentation is done and even through the week so that we can have a discussion about that and create more ways of actually positively engaging with each other. So moving to the current uh, campaigns plan, as you guys have already seen on the WhatsApp group, we have the International Day for Biodiversity this month, it's 22nd May. And uh, Gracia will be giving you guys a good overview about what this day is about and what we are planning. Thank you, Shreta. Uh, perhaps I can share. Oh, are you are you done? Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm done with this part. So maybe Gracia, you can now share your screen. Yeah. Oh, hold on. This is the first time I share my screen with Zoom. So. Mm, I can't. I don't know. So, so does you, or Christian, do you have Sefa's presentation? Yeah, let me share it. Yes, please, because it, it's asking me for other stuff that I cannot solve now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. In the meanwhile, can I ask you a very quick question? Sure. Yeah. Uh, how how does the network define the word youth or young in in terms of age? I mean, or uh, that's a good question. Easy to answer. It's eighteen to thirty. Um, and we have like. Um, so it's 18 to 30, um, and then we have another special category that is 18 to 35 uh, for coordinators of organizations. Uh, and everybody that is above 35 is part of the alumni community of our network. So even if you're over 35, uh, you can still be part of the network, but um, you would not be able to like actively vote or take part, but you can still um, give advice on different processes and on any other activities in the network. I have a question, please. Can you ask me? Can you give me a chance? Hello, hello. Yes, sure. I have a question. Uh, this is Sekandar Shah from Pakistan. Uh, can you tell me about the schedule of your uh, 2020 biological diversity? What are you planning? for this 
big day because it is a very huge for the global biodiversity network. So how are you planning to celebrate it and how the member organizations are going? Have you any plan for the members organization? Thank you so much. Uh, this is exactly what we're gonna talk about. So just hold on for a few moments. Uh, Gracia will present about this um, and then we're gonna explain you. it. I see one question in the chat and I think then we're gonna continue and then I think we're gonna have a bigger section for questions at the end. Um, Scout is asking, uh, what about people under 18? You're completely right. There are incredible high school students that are doing amazing work. Um, the problem for many of our activities is that we need to follow insurance policies. And if you're under 18, um, you're not covered by this, and we would be legally obliged to also provide a chaperone. So if you want to take part in any uh, in-person given activities, we need to require you to be over 18. For everything that happens online, um, there are usually no limits, but because of these insurance policy limits, um, we have decided that the lower limit should be 18. Gracia? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So, hi again, everyone. Um, this is one of our most recent campaign, and we are working hard because the International Day for Biodiversity is coming up on May 22. And this is something we would like to invite you to join rather from your personal account or from your organization. We are preparing a series of activities that um, I'm gonna share with you now. So next. Okay, so the Global Youth Biodiversity Network is joining the Secretariat of the CBD uh, to celebrate the International Day for Biodiversity this year. Every year we do it, but this year is special because um, we are gonna do a week long celebration uh, organizing several virtual activities around the world. So our main week, it's gonna be from May 18 to May 22. Next. Okay, the main objectives of the campaign is to highlight the importance of biodiversity how we are related to it and how it's related to other very important issues that sometimes we don't talk about, like climate change, ecosystem services, traditional knowledge, human health, which is a very popular topic right now, and well being. And also, we want to showcase and put in the spotlight what you can do um, for, to protect biodiversity around the world. So we are going to be sharing stories and inspiring people with all the activities that we have organized. Next. Okay, we also want to engage actively with different youth groups and sectors such as IPLCs, which is indigenous peoples and local communities, farmers, fisher folks across other, and um, youth that are working across other organizations and constituencies. We want to engage not only with the community that is already in the environmental life world, but also the outside community. So they can also get interested and we raise awareness with them about biodiversity. And also we want to continue pushing stronger in the post 2020 global biodiversity framework, which is this big agreement that parties have to make in order to achieve the 2050 vision, which is living in harmony with nature of the convention. Okay, next. Now, um, the Secretariat has prepared a theme for this year. And if you can see my screen there, this is kind of like a puzzle. And each of the pieces of this puzzle, um, it's to celebrate one specific topic. So for example, in May 18, we're gonna be focusing on science and traditional knowledge. May 19, food security and health. May 20, the World Day for Cultural Diversity, and May 21, the World B Day. And finally, our most important day, the, World, um, the International Day for Biodiversity. And the theme of this year is like, our solutions are in nature. So mostly um, of our posts and everything that we're organizing are around these topics. Next. Okay, um, someone is asking if they can record. We are recording the session right now. So if you're having any community, like sound issues or you cannot really see what we are projecting, don't worry. We are gonna share the video after the meeting. Okay, so 
in order to get a huge momentum for the week, we are preparing also some activities before that week in order to promote the event, collect very relevant information that we are going to be showcasing during the main week, like stories about you, about what you are doing to help the loss of biodiversity or other information. Then we are also raising awareness, especially about these interlinked topics that I mentioned before. And that's it. Next. Okay, so before we start with the speci specific activities that we have planned, I would like to tell you guys that this huge plan has been developed in coordination with the national and regional chapters and the steering committee. So this is not only the like ideas from a, a small group of people, it's coming from different backgrounds, countries and interests and at the end everyone voted for what we wanted to do and this is the final result, okay? Um, so on May 18, we're gonna have a webinar on traditional knowledge and biodiversity. We're mainly trying to invite um, traditional, sorry, IPLCs, but youth that are um, very involved with the topic and that and will help us to raise awareness on that. We are on biodiversity photography challenge. And we are doing some interviews by videos, answering um, the questions, what do you wish more people understand about traditional knowledge? So we kind of um, broadcast this topic and maybe break with some um, like ideas that are wrong and, and people understand. Then we are also doing a lot of interactive posts and stories in our different channels. We have three main channels, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And this year we are open TikTok because it's becoming very popular. Thank you, next. Okay, then May 19, uh, we are preparing some videos because the theme is food security and health. So we are doing some videos on how to do compost and home food garden. These are gonna be prepared by some, by some of the national chapters. There is also gonna be a blog post about how to do your own permaculture. And we are sharing local recipes from around the world, um, showcasing the elements of biodiversity that have to be in the dish in order to create it, and also how it's related to our culture. Finally, there are gonna be some discussions about the links between public health and biodiversity, because right now with the pandemic, everyone has, has it like in their minds. Okay, next. For the World Bee Day, um we know it's very like it's a very famous day a lot of people like it and we we are gonna do a pollinators trivia on our different channels and not only to talk about bees but also to talk about how other species are very relevant to this process um we are also gonna have like a video challenge on creating a pollinator garden where people are gonna be able to learn um how to create one and finally, we're having a challenge to spy a pollinator in your garden, uh, and you can share the, the, the photos with us, and we're gonna be sharing through our channels. In Facebook, we have more than 10,000 followers, um, and in Instagram, I think we have 1,000 followers, and in Twitter, I think we have around 2,000. So we are building upon our channels, so in order to reach more people every time. Thank you. May 21, World Day for Cultural Diversity. So um, the main activity for this day is that we wanted to encourage people to talk with their grand grandpas, grandparents, because due to the situation, it's hard to be with them if you don't live directly in their homes. So we are collecting stories and different on traditions that our grandparents have shown us. Then um, there is also another initiative Oh, hold on, I have to accept the people who are joining us. Um, there is also another initiative um, to show and tell with a picture or video challenge um, how traditional knowledge, sorry, traditional clothing are other objects, how they are also related to biodiversity, right? Because sometimes we have clothing and the colors our clothing has comes from, from nature, so these kind of messages we're looking for. And also um, we are sharing, hold on, I have to accept. Christian, I don't know if you can accept people that are joining because the, the um, 
a screen just pop up on the on mine and I cannot read. Um, I, I will check this with Sweater. I'm I'm sorry, guys. We're we're just using Zoom because we have such a big group this time. Sweater, can you please add them? Uh, I think once uh, her presentation is over, I can because right now I'm sharing my screen and it's not allowing me to do anything. Okay, no worries. I will accept them when I'm done. It's fine. Okay, so then um, we are also doing a worldwide sharing of biodiversity relating songs, stories, and idioms, poems based on traditions from your culture. So if you guys have something to share, it's you're more than welcome to share with us. We're gonna have a post the Google Forms where we are collecting the information. Next. And finally, the, the most important day, we're having a Facebook watch party to celebrate uh, the, with videos, the activities for the whole week. So this is a live uh, party. Then we are showcasing youth-led solutions across countries and regions. Actually, if you go today to our social media channels, um, at given slash CBD, or in Facebook, we are like the Global Youth Biodiversity Network. Today, we are launching um, the, the open call to collect these stories, and we're gonna through our channels. Also, we're gonna have an activity to ask a scientist or an expert about any topic related to the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. So if you are interested in knowing more about this framework, what is the main aim and all that you can join. So they are gonna be answering. And finally, we are creating an inspiration chain video uh, to show how you have, have inspired other youth this month to take action towards biodiversity. So I mentioned this before, but we are working together with the chapters. It's not just a small group of people taking decisions. Next. And so just to for you to know, to give a, a wide view of the thing, we are organizing some stuff that has, that has been agreed with the chapters. As even, but chapters are also free to create activities based on the agenda that we have decided. Okay, all right. So next, we can go to the to the end, Shreta, to the teams. Sorry, yep, fine. Okay, so uh, we have created three task force. Um, in order to be to to make this day a reality, because when you are mobilizing so many people with so many activities, it's quite hard. So behind us, there is a huge team of fifty people working on even creating videos and um, developing some some scripts or either designing all the posts that we do. And finally, the team that glues everything on, uh, who are in charge of posting and collecting all the information to create the content. So this is how we have organized the task force. Last. Okay, so for last but not least, uh, we would like to invite you to join us in this, in this day. We are developing a social media toolkit that if you're interested to use, you can apply directly to, to your social media channel or you can either reshare what we Uh, more more like more fun you can join what we are planning so if you have any question please let me know here in the chat and i'm gonna help you to to i'm gonna have help to try to answer them all and if you're also interested in joining the event or uh, the task force please let us know here in the chat and i'm done Super, thank you so much, Gracia. Um, maybe before we proceed, because we have so many people, especially from Africa in this call, um, Kevin James, would you like to say a few words on how we are connect coordinating in Africa? Kevin? Uh, sorry, guys, I was trying to try and mute myself. Yeah, uh, can everybody hear me? Christian, can you hear me? Yes. yes, I can hear you well. Uh, good. So, first of all, I would really want to appreciate the guys from Africa who made it to this call. It's actually amazing that you all made it. This is one of the largest uh, Zoom calls that I've personally attended, and it's quite encouraging. 
So for people who are from the Africa uh, zone, I want to believe that you are either aware of the Jibin chapters that exist in your country. And if you're not aware, I would really encourage you to either send us a message and ask if you have one. And if you don't have one, we'll be happy to help you create one if you want. And also, I want to let you know that we have a Jibin Facebook page called Jibin Africa that we normally uh, update our activities and events and other related information. So please take a time on your Facebook page. You just like look out for GB in Africa and you will have more information at your disposal. Thank you, Jens. <clears throat> Jens, do you have anything to add on that? Um, probably what I can add is we have a couple of uh, uh, local chapters in Africa, uh, national chapters in Africa um, that you can follow in case you have no idea, you can feel free to reach out to us uh, through the Gibbon Facebook page. You can inbox us to get you in touch with uh, the closest chapter. Probably if there is a chapter in your country, we can get you uh, connected to that chapter in case there is no chapter um we, we can get you in touch with the african chapter and then we can also assist you uh to kick start the process of opening up a local chapter in your country uh, so there is a lot of things that we can do with you um then of course if you need any support any advice you can always reach out to us um through the facebook page Gibbon in africa but we also have uh, um, uh, we, we can we, we can always uh, connect uh, probably we can also share our contacts at the end of this call uh, just in case you have anything that you feel you need a one-on-one -on -one to get clarity on uh, we are very happy to help you get understand things a little better and start with us into the right direction yeah that's all thank you yeah just to finalize I've seen a couple of people from Kenya as well uh, just to tell you or inform you that we have a WhatsApp group for the Jibin Kenya chapter, please get in touch. Uh, the Kenyan chapter is always open for any young person like you who is ready to work with us. So if you have any ideas that you would want uh, to put across uh, after the call, please, please, please get in touch so that we can see what we can do as the Kenyan people. Thank you. Christian, can I add something? Of course. No, Latin America, right? No, 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 that. It's because I'm reading the, yes, I'm from Latin America. I'm reading the chat. Guys, there are so many uh, comments in the chat. Thank you so much. So uh, I'm going to post in our WhatsApp group that I am Grecia. So you can contact me there for the International Labor Biodiversity. I'm going to try to answer all the questions in the chat. But if I don't, please don't hesitate to contact us through the WhatsApp group. Thank you. Yeah, just to also add, we have the website. So if you go to Gibbon, Gibbon's website and just click on campaigns, you'll, you can go to the page about the International Day for Biodiversity. And there you can also see all the activities that are being planned. So, you know, you, uh, anybody who's missed something in the presentation, you can just find it on our website as well. Super. Thank you so much, James, Kevin, Gracia, and Sweta. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, we will um, post the email address of the steering committee in the WhatsApp group so that you can um, contact us if you, if you want to get in touch with the Given Africa team, for instance. If you're not from Africa, but if you want to do something similar in Latin America, Europe, Asia, or any other part of the world, just let us know and we bring you in touch with the people um, that are working on this. And in the chat, if you just check, Kevin just posted the invitation link to the WhatsApp group of the Kenyan chapter. So if you're from Kenya, you're most welcome to join. And um, as I mentioned, we definitely don't have chapters all over the world. So you just uh, contact us via WhatsApp, um, address here to you, Sweta, and then we try to help you as much as we can. All right. Um, Sweta, do you want to continue with activities for this year or shall I take over this part? Yeah, so guys, uh, now that we have the WhatsApp group, you guys will be constantly getting updates from us on what's happening, what's going on. So we will keep you posted about 
uh, all the activities that Gibbon is taking part in. And you know, if you are interested, you can also be a part of the discussions, planning of the activities, and even implementation of the work. So now that we are on this group, we can all keep in touch and continue to work through there. Uh, also, uh, feel free to let us know on the WhatsApp group if you have other ideas of how you would like this team to engage. And we could always, you know, think about that. Or you can send us a personal message and then we can discuss how the different ideas you have in your mind. And then we can, you know, propose it to the group in a fashion that everybody can, you know, accept it. Uh, yes, so Christian, I think, yeah, you can go ahead and explain to them the rest of uh, post 2020. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, just to follow up on what Sweta just said, like we really understand ourselves as a network for you. So if your organization has any, um, specific needs, if you're running a project, if you're a campaign and you want us to advertise this through our channels, we're happy to do this. Um, as you know, we're a lot of people here on this chat, a lot of people in the WhatsApp group, so we always have to do a little selection. And also, if you contact us, maybe consider contacting us separately from the uh, WhatsApp group so that we're not spending everybody. But if there is anything, or if you have a concern or something, just let us know and we will do our best to help you out. Right, so talking about um, other projects and campaigns um, for this year, well, um, we touched on it, and I think everybody that is active in the biodiversity space has heard about it. Um, the CBD was in the process of creating a follow-up to the current strategic plan. If you haven't heard about it, the strategic plan was adopted at this meeting in 2010, where Gibbon was founded. It covers 10 years. It consists of 20 targets, the so-called Aichi biodiversity targets. It set an actually very ambitious framework uh, on how the world should act on biodiversity. However, the big problem is that governments didn't really do this. Um, there is a huge gap in terms of implementation. So governments are now working on a process to adopt a new 10-year framework for the protection of biodiversity. This was supposed to be adopted in October this year at COVID in China, but due to the COVID-19 global pandemic, as you can see, almost everything is postponed. We still don't know how the process is going to continue. Um, governments are not really experienced in doing activities online, so we're now waiting for new dates. And um, we hope that we will soon know how the post 2020 process. You can see we had a lot of activity planned. Um, and unfortunately, all the in person events uh, that are part of this roadmap, we had to postpone or we had to cancel them. Um, and yeah, we're currently in waiting and um, we're thinking on how we can continue with this. This also includes um, our key event that we were super, super excited um, to organize. After 10 years with no international youth conference on biodiversity, we were super happy. Um, and maybe some of you have applied um, to organize our 2020 Global Youth Biodiversity Summit in Japan. Um, unfortunately, we had to postpone this too. We're currently, like everybody else, awaiting for the new dates of the COP so that we can align our summit with those dates. Um, the Japanese government, who is funding this activity, is still standing behind us. So we're just waiting for them um, to, to let us know when we can continue with the organization. Currently, it looks like it's going to take place at some point in 2021. Um, but as you all know, we just have to like wait and see how the situation with the pandemic is going to evolve and whenever it's going to be safe for traveling. For this summit, uh, we have secured funding for around 100 people to attend it. Um, and like all our events, this is open to all partner organizations. And if anybody else is in a position to raise some funding, we know that uh, the European Union was trying to um, provide some additional funding, the Nordic Council of Germany and the WWF was also interested. So if your organization is also in a position, as soon as we resume these plans, you're all welcome to join us this, this summit. Um, we're going to reframe um, the objective of the summit a little bit. Um, we're probably going to focus it on kickstarting implementation because at the UN there's a lot of time being wasted in just talking about what we're going to do and we think we, we need this meeting to really brainstorm on how we can bring the youth biodiversity um, movement to the next level and we can make sure that intergenerational equity and youth-led um, biodiversity conservation, um, conservation activities are at the heart of these activities. 
So um, uh, we don't want to give up. Um, yeah, this is on in-person. I'm going to talk about this next. Um, we can do a lot of things online. So for the time that we all have to stay at home, we want to make the best out of this. Sweater already introduced you to our plans. Um, Sweta and Gracia already introduced you to our plans for um, the International Biodiversity um, Day this year, but we also have some other activities planned that we will inform you about in the next months. We hope that we can organize a series of online webinars on the different building blocks of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. So we will focus on issues like urban biodiversity, um, issues like protected areas, the rights of indigenous people, what role intergenerational equity could play in post-2020. So we will try to look at post-2020 from all different perspectives and have a series of webinars um, about this so that we can really deepen our knowledge. We are also planning a series of online capacity building seminars that will more focus on skill building, um, stuff like project management, communication, social media strategies. And we hope that we can launch these two activities around June. Um, in addition to this, we're also planning to have an online survey to collect your views, your positions on how this post-2020 framework should look like. And um, when we launch it, we will also prepare it with a process where you can give us input on how such a service should look like, what you would like to have incorporated. Um, but we want you to be critical. We understand in many countries, it's not easy to criticize the government or to point to the gaps. We don't want to bring anybody into danger but we want to give you an opportunity to really openly speak about what is working in terms of biodiversity conservation in your countries, what is not working, what needs to be improved, and how can we make sure that all your suggestions find its way into this global plan of action for biodiversity that the CBD will probably adopt next year. Um, what we also had planned, um, I think some of you have heard about it, we announced it at uh, the previous CBD meetings, we were hoping to organize a train that would go all the way from Europe to where the COP was supposed to take place, to Kunming. Um, at the moment, we also put this on hold. Um, we're still waiting on, on uh, where the COP and when the COP is going to take place. Um, but we had an idea for this COP um, to gather all the youth delegates that were in a position to be um, to come to Europe um, and then we would start the train somewhere in Europe. We weren't sure if it would be Brussels or Paris and then we would have a train full of young people, full of people that know how biodiversity works, traveling together in a low carbon way all the way to Kunming. The journey would take around um, 17 days. Um, so those that would be in a position, we were hoping that we could invite them to join this train. Um, yeah, this is basically, um, what we hope we're going to do this year and next year. There are a lot of more activities that will come up on rather short notice. Um, I didn't talk about all the in-person meetings that we have pl planned. Um, these are some activities that we hope that we can realize. Um, of course, um, as I mentioned before, we want to send youth delegations to all CBD meetings. We hope that we can do our summit in 2021. We have some ideas for youth consultations and intergenerational dialogues, but it will all depend on, on how the pandemic is going to go. And maybe a lot of these activities can only take place in 2021. Um, yeah, but that's, that's basically it. Um, yeah, I hope we can make this all happen and I hope we can use this pandemic to, you know, really think a little bit back, think about what actually matters, what are the actions that, that we can take to make a difference and maybe also remind governments that protecting biodiversity is not going to some big fancy conferences. It's really about the actions that we take at home, the things that we do on the ground. Um, and we need to make sure that um, the gap between what political leaders are announcing and what is happening on the ground is going to be closed. And um, we hope that we can use this this time while we're all at home to brainstorm about some fresh ideas. All right, um, that would be it from my side. Um, Sveta Greska, I don't know if you have something else. Um, yeah, we were thinking that because many people are asking about the creation of chapters, perhaps we can reshare the slide where we have the process, like this, the S, so people can uh, see it and maybe take a screenshot or um, just take notes on that. These are the steps, so I don't know if you want to explain them again. This is also on the website, the ah, yeah. so you can always find it there. If you need, I can also try to share it with you guys. 
Uh, so just to let you guys know, the chapter creation is all about trying to find a way for young people to get together uh, in their own country so that they can create a community of young people who want to work on biodiversity uh, together. So here, what we've done is that, you know, we've always asked people that within chapters, unlike for Gibbon uh, in, internationally, any chapter, you can be a part of a chapter if you're below 35, because the, in several countries, their youth definition is uh, till the age of 35, from 18 to 35. So therefore, we kept that uh, leeway uh, open till 35. And uh, here, the whole aim is if you have at least three people in uh, three people who are interested to coordinate a chapter, you can propose that to us and then we can help you guys create a national chapter. Uh, so currently, the way it happens is you sign up and the sign up sheet is on the, Gib on the Gibbon website too. Once you sh sign up, uh, we let you guys start creating a vision and an action plan document and we start talking to you guys to help you guys, you know, plan what has to be done and you know how we can how you can think about doing these uh, activities and once your team starts uh, you know designs an action plan designs what the vision is behind your creation of this national chapter we we also ask the chapter people to divide up roles and responsibilities we've given people about how they can create an action, action plan what could be the elements in it so we've given you guys all the basic information which you can use to finally create the actual uh, chapter and then once you guys have this basic planning done we discuss it with you guys we have a call with the steering committee along with some of the experienced chapter coordinators to help you guys uh, improve on the action plan you've created and once that's done you are ready to go and launch your chapter and start working with your community of youth to build and grow your chapter and you know improve it our chapters have grown in a very organic manner so to say it in that way, it's quite, uh, 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 we don't have a hierarchical, hierarchical structure. So, you know, as a chapter, you are free to take up the role of uh, organizing yourself and planning activities within the chapter. However, we do uh, tell chapters that we give every chapter a six month trial period because that helps a chapter formulate itself better and create a stronger uh, group within themselves on how they're going to work together as a team. So till then, they are uh, they are considered in trial as a national chapter. And after the six months are done, we try to have a call with them. And then we officially accept them as a chapter with Gibbon. So these are some of the steps that we follow. And uh, yeah, so if you guys are interested to know more about where chapters are present and where they are not, uh, we, will, we, we can share some information about that. And you know, if you're interested in creating a chapter, let us know and we can talk about it and how you, your organization can support and support the creation of a national chapter. Uh, any other questions uh, you guys have for us? Yeah, Shweta, we have one from Slava. She says, what GYBN can do? My idea, for example, good organizations in Europe ask, for... no, I think it was more a comment, sorry. Ah, no, here is a question. Sorry, I see it. I see it. Uh, on the website, in the tab of member organizations, there are no umbrella. How should we be better? Okay. So here, what we are going to plan to do is that we uh, will find a way, maybe we'll create a Google form where all of you guys can input a little bit information about your chap or your organizations and where they are from, where they are based. Uh, your logo and maybe one or two po photos of some activities your organization has done and then we will put all this information up on the given website. Uh, this will take us some time because we have around 500 organizations, over 500 organizations. So it will take us time to put all the information out there. But definitely we can, you know, we want, we'll create this uh, form and we'll send it to you guys so that you guys can give us this basic information and we can post it on the website. At the same time, we could link our website to your website. So in case people are interested to know more about your organization, they can click on the link, uh, click on your link and directly go to your website. This is one thing we can definitely do. Along with that, if you're also interested, you can partner with us for the International Day for Biodiversity and the Biodiversity Week. And if you are interested to bring your community into uh, to actively engage for this week, also you guys can just share the, your logos with us and we'll directly add it to the International Day for Biodiversity's page. 
as one of our partnering organizations. And, you know, you guys can also take lead on, you know, doing some of the activities as well. Uh, are there any other questions you guys have? Well, maybe just a quick comment or a question. Sure. That will be since you are trying to like mobilize young people from across the world, you know, do you try to like position them based on like a thematic area? Because these are like young people, they might have like interest. Maybe they are focused on marine conservation, they want to focus on like you know, ecology or they want to focus on climate change and things like that. Do you have those kind of thematic focuses whereby their communication or the WhatsApp forums or whatsoever resource material you're going to create for them can be based on those thematic areas? That's an actually excellent question, and we are really interested to do that. It's just that currently, uh, with the capacity we have within the steering committee, we have not yet uh, succeeded in making those thematic uh, sections. We do have uh, informal groups that have been created on various thematic issues, and these uh, yeah, young people are working together. But we have to still formalize a process to create a more established thematic area working groups. And yeah, we will definitely, we will look at, look into work, doing something up on that in the coming maybe weeks, um, maybe one month, mon months. And, you know, we could get back to you guys about some of the thematic groups we have and how people can engage with that. Christian, would you like to add something to this? I think you covered it. Great. Anything else, guys? Yes. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, I'm Hassan Molit from Somalia, Somali Green Business Association, and I think we do not have a chapter of GBY in Somalia. So my question is, can any local NGO that's also working on biodiversity and climate activity uh, become as a chapter of GYBN? representative in that country in a certain individual. Thanks for that question. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Sorry, please continue. Do you have anything? I think he's done. Okay, got it. Okay, so thanks for that. So yes, uh, there is a potential for uh, a organization that is working on biodiversity to also become uh, or host the national chapter. However, if your organization hosts the national chapter, you need to be aware that the national chapter will be uh, will have more access should be uh, should have access to all young individuals in your country. So uh, you cannot restrict the chapter to be only uh, for people from your NGO. So let's say, for example, uh, we have several organizations that have uh, taken up the role of becoming chapter coordinate coordination platforms like uh, Greenhood Nepal where uh, Reagan, I think he's on the call. He's one of, uh, he's the coordinator for Gibbon Nepal, but he's also one of the, uh, uh, one of the organizers, uh, one of the leaders of Greenhood Nepal. Uh, for their organization, they have created a, a, a group of, a group of coordinators from their group have created the chapter, but they have kept it open for more young people from, uh, from other young people from Nepal who are interested in biodiversity to also join them and be a part of this network. So that's the only catch. As an organization, you can definitely start a chapter, but you need to keep it open for any other organization or individuals that want to engage with the chapter should be allowed to engage with it. Okay, I think uh, there are no more questions. But uh, and if guys, if you have more questions, feel free to ask them in the WhatsApp group. Uh, hello, hello. hello. Ask a question. Hello. Yes, hello. Yeah, uh, my name is George Amanri from Cameroon. So uh, I'm not on WhatsApp. Are you group. I just want to ask. Hello. Yes, you are not in the WhatsApp group. Uh huh. Yeah, so I just want to ask how I can join the WhatsApp group. Um, yes, Tim, can, can we put the link in the chat? Shall we do that? Okay, yeah, it works for me. Thanks. Mm -hmm.
there was someone else who wanted to speak. Yeah, I um, would like to say hello from South Sudan. Hi, hello. Yeah, it's a pleasure to, to follow up every, uh, like every bit of this conversation. It is a very rich one. I would like to say thanks to uh, the great presentation and all the amazing uh, discussion that has been going on. And um, I'm super excited to meet a lot of uh, new faces and, and the faces in the WhatsApp group. And I would like to say uh, this has been uh, what we've been working for and I am really super excited that the, I'll be teaming up and learn something new also from other group within the, uh, within the forum. Thanks so much. If I could raise a question, Gracia? Uh, yes, sure. So um, uh, just before you, you raise your question, Guys, just to respect everyone time, we're gonna take uh, two more questions, and then uh, if you have more, feel free to ask in the in the WhatsApp group. And uh, yeah, I think the okay, link is ready. Thank you. To the chat. So my name is thank David you, Monene. Thank you. Hold on, I... oh, David, and then the one who's saying thank you. I don't know. Okay. Who's <laughs> who's <laughs> Sorry, hey, David. So, so my name is David Munene. I'm with the Catholic Youth Network for Environmental Sustainability in Africa, SINESA. I have looked at the presentation and I like the, the way you have organized yourselves. But I just have two comments. One is about the proactivity of the, of the respective chapters. Um, the impression, uh, for example, that has been uh, with us is that GYBN has been not really like the youth constituencies uh, been operating yes, more like a, more like an organization on its own. Um, secondly, I would like to ask whether there are any considerations for inclusion of uh, a faith-based perspective, uh, especially considering the statistics of um, like at least eight people in the world associate themselves with some kind of faith or belief whether at GYBN at the international or at the African level is um, considering having a faith-based angle. If you look at organizations like UNEP, we already have things like Faith for Earth Initiative. It's not a major group yet, but it has its role. Finally, on the issue of uh, existing, for example, campaigns like the Ecosystems Decade, decade of Ecosystem Restoration and um, the, the New Deal for Nature and People, um, what role is GYBN in uh, words? Meeting put together by the GYBN steering committee. Although I had issues with the network, so I couldn't connect very freely. Or through the meeting, but I'll see. Have to go over the recordings. But I just want to put up a question. I want to find out: Can GYBN assist um, its members and member organizations for accreditation with um, CBN? So that's my question. Thank you so much. Accreditation CPA. CBD. Um, ah. CBN accreditation. Ah, okay. The, okay. Sorry, CBD, CBD, I beg your pardon. The Convention for Biodiversity um, Accreditation. Yeah, okay. So thank you so much. Now we're going to answer those questions and then we're closing. So Christian, if the floor is yours. All right, okay. So on, on the first question, um, first of all, thank you so much. Um, with regards to the proactivity of chapters, um, well, you're right. Given it is um, not working like a traditional use constituency, um, traditional use constituency just focuses on bringing people to international meetings. We also try to do concrete project implementation by organizing workshops, um, activities on the ground, facilitating chapters, and, and all these kind of activities. So we're trying to be a little bit more. Um, I don't know who you have tried to contact, um, but it always like depends on how busy a chapter is, how, how active they are, um, on, on how quickly you get feedback or not. 
if there is something that you would like to address with the Gibbons Steering Committee, do contact us. Um, you can write to Gibbons Steering Committee at gmail.com. I think I was in touch with Ellen from your organization before. Um, if you copied in that email, just like write to us and we can figure out a way on how we can better integrate you. Um, but the challenge here is also we're all volunteers. We're all doing this on top of our normal jobs, on top of other activities. So um, we do our very best to like get back to everybody as quickly as possible. And if it sometimes takes longer, then I'm really sorry, but um, send us a reminder and we will see what we can do to um, work closer to better. Then your second question was on face-based approaches. Um, I would have to check. I think the CBD has adopted some declarations on biodiversity and face in the past. Um, I'm not aware of an active process in the CBD at the moment to have the dimension uh, more recognized in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. I will check this, um, but as given, we're of course completely open um, and we're happy to like to use something on this. Um, and we could get back in touch with you to see what exactly we can do. And maybe your organization could even work together with others to lead this process and come up with a document that we could submit. Um, but I think a first step is always like to check what is already there under the CBD and how we can link it so that it really has um, an effect. Then your third question was on the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration and the role given is playing in this. Um, the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration is led by UNAM. So it's not a CBD initiative. Um, we're in touch with our friends from the UN Major Group for Children and Youth, and they have formed a task force under the UNEP Youth Constituency, the UNEP MUCY, to provide youth inputs for the ecosystem um, restoration decade. If you are interested in that, um, I think you would have to contact um, a girl by the name Lukratna. She is uh, one of the focal points of UNEP and GCY together with um, another girl, her name Lisa. If you don't have her contacts, you just send me an email or a message in the WhatsApp group afterwards, um, and then I can connect you with this teacher. Then we had a question from Ayodeji on accreditation to the CBD. Um, what we can do if people are confirmed to come to CBD meetings and they're part of Gibbon, then we can accredit them as individuals. Um, so if you are interested in this and if you already have like the funds secured um, and you want to attend the next CBD meeting, then please send us a message and then we can um, see if we can put you on the list. That's not a problem. All right, I think that's it. Um, Gracia, did I forget anything? No, it's, it's okay. Um, I think we can close now, team, and, and yeah, so.